can you generate a simple SaaS landing page using AI? In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Autogen to create a simple landing page for a SaaS business. In this page, you will be able to get the user email, for example, like this. And when you enter the email and press the button, you get to a page like this. Hey everyone, my name is Venerin. And in this video, we're going to build a simple SaaS application using Autogen. We are going to build three different pages, one for the landing page itself, a thank you page, and then an admin page. In it, we are going to use the Autogen agents in order to create all of the code for us. And we're going to give some feedback to the agents so the code gets better over time. We're going to build a very simple Flask and SQLite 3 application and I'm going to host the application on Python anywhere. So you're going to play around with the demo for yourself. Let's get started. A complete text tutorial along with source code is going to be available for ML Expert Pro subscribers. So if you want to follow along, please subscribe to ML Expert Pro. I'm going to leave a link down in the description below. Thanks. The Autogen library has been progressing very nicely since our last video. And as a reminder, here is a simple overview of what the library is doing. Essentially, you can build your own AI agents that are powered by LLMs. And in our case, we're going to use ChatGPT or GPT 3.5 Turbo to create those agents. If you want to have a deeper dive into the library, please go to my previous video where I describe what Autogen is. I have a Google Club notebook that is running the latest version of Autogen. And at this time, this is the version 0.114. The authors are actually working on version 0.2. So this would be a major upgrade, but still there is not a stable release for that. So the first thing that I do here in the notebook is to essentially get the get pass function, which are going to use, I'm going to use for the OpenAI API key. And then I'm going to include the agents and the group chat and the group chat manager I was along with the user proxy agent from the Autogen library. It's going to be a very simple process to, in order to create our agents. And as in the last video, I'm going to create this GPT config list in which I'm going to actually describe that I want to be using GPT 3.5 Turbo, but with the extended context window size. So we're going to be using 16,000 tokens. And this will be really helpful when you are going back and forth with your agents. Another thing that I'm going to use here is that I'm going to disable the caching. So all of the requests are going to be passed to the API uh, from OpenAI. And then for temperature, I'm going to be setting as zero since I want this experiment to be as repeatable as possible. So how do I get these models? Uh, if you go to the OpenAI website uh, on the documentation, you can go through the different models. And the models that are currently supported by Autogen are GPT-4 and GPT-3.5. So in here, you can get different versions of these models. You have GPT-4, GPT-4, 35, uh, 32K, uh, and some other models. In our case, I'm going to be using this Turbo 16K as I already told you. So in order to run this, I'm going to create a very simple setup. This setup is actually very similar to what we have from one of the Autogen original tutorials on GitHub with one of the notebook. From For here, the engineer, admin, and the planner along with the executor are actually a copy paste of what they have from the prompts. And the other, let's say, spin-off is that instead of a critic, I have this Karen character, which is again a critic, if you will. So I mostly preserved the original prompt, but uh, I said that this actually this agent actually should be running as a Karen or expect to behave as a Karen. So what is the process right here? First, we have our agent, which is going to represent us. So this will be the user and we are going to be the admin. So we are going to say whether or not we are approving this or disapproving what is happening with our SaaS landing page that we're going to build. Then we are going to create this engineer. So engineer is the one that who is actually writing the source code for the Flask application that we're going to build. 
then we have the planner. So the planner's job is to create a high level overview of what needs to be done. So this is something like a project manager, if you will. And then the planner is collaborating with the engineer and then the executor. Uh, so the executor's job is to actually run some code if that needs to be done. Uh, we're going to see if this is going to be needed at all. Uh, and then we have the last critic or the last agent, which we're going to be calling Karen. So the job of Karen is to actually have a look at the process from a side view, if you will. And then it's going to be providing some feedback along, of course, with some whining on why and why not uh, things are happening the way that they are, uh, just as a real world Karen would. And you notice that to each agent, I'm actually passing this LLM config, uh, except for the admin. Uh, so uh, since this is the user, I'm going to say that the admin is not going to be using any LLMs and it's not going to execute any code. So how do we wrap this? We are going to wrap it just in the last video in a group chat. So this is going to essentially describe all of the agents that we're going to be using. I don't have any previous messages or any history. And then I have a max round of 50. So this will be the maximum number of back and forth that the agents can do. Uh, keep in mind that when you're using this type of libraries, the API limits are going to be hitted or the APIs are going to be hitted a lot. So this is, a, let's say, a brute force approach to stopping the agents from going through the API a bit more than you want. So this is expensive, so you, you need to have some sort of guardrails. And then I have this group chat manager. So this is the final manager. I'm passing in the group chat and then the LM config to that. So here is the task that we're going to assign to our agents and what we are going to be actually building. So this is the prompt. Build a landing page for a SaaS that create chatbots using ChatGPT from a set of documents. So we're going to be creating a chat application that talks to your documents and I'm going to create a landing page for that or the agents are going to be creating that for us. Think of the name of the product and a short tagline, add a form to collect user email for when the product is ready. So this will be very similar to what uh, on a real world landing page would be. It's going to be the name of the product, a short tagline, and then a form that collects the emails. And then I want this to have an admin page that shows a table of added emails. So we're going to have this uh, page that is very specific for the admin to see what are the emails that were collected. Of course, this is very simplistic in the real world. You would have a bit more code to string everything together. And then the specific technologies that this is going to be using is the, SWA, uh, the FWASC for the app, Tailwind CSS for styling. And I'm setting here that this must be centered somewhat, and then uh, it should work on mobile devices and an SQLite 3 as a database. So all of this is going to be incorporated within the agents. And then the very simple thing that you need to do is to create the user proxy uh, to call actually the initiate chat method on the user proxy. I'm going to pass in the manager, which contains all of the agents uh, that we are talking about. And then this is going to be the prompt or the message that we want to pass in to our agents workforce. So here is the output from that. So the admin is talking to the chat manager and then the message is received by the agents. So the first and most important thing is that the planner is receiving the message and you can see that the planner is actually creating a step-by-step -step approach or a plan. So name and tag tagline, design landing page, database integration, admin page, testing and deployment, feedback and iteration, final approval and launch. Okay, so the plan looks uh, very good actually. And then the planner is talking to the engineer. I have completed step one of the plan. Here is the name and tagline for the product. Name bot genius and then tagline unleash the power of chatbots. And then the planner takes over and it says great the name bot genius and tagline unleash the power of chatbots sounds compelling. Okay, let's move to step two. So the planner is actually remembering the plan. And then uh, it says that the engineer should set up a FWASC project, create a landing page, 
and use Tailwind CSS for landing page. So this is very powerful and very good. And remember that we're just using ChatGPT or GPT 3.5. Okay, so next the engineer is going to get the code for the Flask application, create a landing page with a form and style it using Tailwind CSS. So this is the first iteration of the code. Uh, one thing that you are going to see here is that the name of the project and the taglines are actually missing. Uh, there are some other errors as well, uh, which I'm going to go through in a bit. And then uh, it says that please make sure you have the necessary dependencies installed, such as Flask and SQLy3. Once you've completed the steps, let me know to proceed. Okay, so next, the um, agents are actually asking for my opinion. So I am uh, providing a feedback during this process. This is not automated and it is very good since you can actually follow the progress up until now. And then what I'm saying right here is to add the name and the tagline to the Flask app. And then I want this to be passed to the templates and then create the SQLite tree table if it doesn't exist. Okay, so this feedback is given to the engineer. And he says that here is the updated code that includes the name and tagline, passes them to templates and creates SQL white tree table if it doesn't exist. So all of these were errors that I was able to catch on my own review. So if you don't know what is happening right here, probably it's going to be a bit hard to understand whether or not the models are making some mistakes or the agents are making some mistakes. But in our case, uh, there were. So the way that this engineer decided to use the product name and tagline is to through the app config. So these are essentially var variables or configuration variables that are provided to the Flask app. And you can see that it is adding the bot genius and unleash the power of chatbots uh, within here. And then I'm also creating this or uh, it is also passing in the product name and the tagline to the landing page HTML template and to the thank you HTML template. Also, you see that it added this function called create table and the create table function is now called from here, from the main function that we have. So this is the function that is actually running uh, right now. So yeah, I would say that this looks, everything uh, looks all right. Uh, of course, if you're not running with this actual implementation, probably the create table is not going to be code and I'm going to address this in a bit. So the next thing that we are missing are the actual templates or the HTML templates. So my feedback was to create, just create the templates. And these are the templates that are created for the landing page. You'll see that we have the Tailwind CSS included right here. We have a custom style that is actually centering the items from the in the container right here so this looks very good and then for the title of the html we are passing in the product name and you can see here that we are also using the product name and the tagline so these are passed to the template next uh you see that we have the form right here so the form contains an email input and then a submit button with some styling uh, with get notified as a text which is again pretty good i mean the web page is relatively simple, but the understanding of the bots is actually quite good. And then we have the template thank you, which is a very simple as well, uh, one with the same styling. And then this is just the thank you page. We'll notify you when product name is ready. And then we have the admin page, which is again using the same style container. But here we have a table, which is wrapping the full width of the container or the parent and you can see that this is actually using the tailwind css uh, classes which is great and then we have the email column and then we are iterating over each email which are passed in again from the app so yeah this is pretty much what we are getting thus far and finally it says that the necessary dependencies should be installed and uh, we should know everything whether or not it is working and then it says that it doesn't know a language html so it's not going to execute any code for us and the final piece that i've given it is to exit since i believe this is what we need in order to run our landing page
And for completeness, let's see the application opened within a VS Code project. So you see right here that I get the all of the source code from the agents. The only difference here is that I'm calling the create table function right within the landing page, just in case if we don't have the database created, I'm going to create this uh, when this page is going to be accessed. Uh, so this will be the first time that we're calling uh, the project. Maybe the, not the best approach, but it should work for our simple demo. And the other things that are doing here is to create the templates within the templates subdirectory. And here I've just created all of the templates HTMLs provided by the agents. I'm going to show you how I've hosted this application on Python anywhere. You can probably host it anywhere else. I have no affiliations with this uh, particular product, but I'm just using it in order to show you how easily you can host this Flask application that was generated by those AI agents. And this is my account. You see here that I have this AI SAS, pythonanywhere.com. So this is going to be the page that we're going to use. And here I'm going to go to the files and I'm going to show you what I did upload. So first thing that you are going to notice here is that we have this emails database. So this is going to be the database that was created for us during the initial start of the app. And here I've created this file flask underscore app.py. So this is essentially the app.py file. And then within the templates, uh, you see that I have essentially the same templates. I've just uploaded those here. And I'm going to show you now whether or not this all of this works. But important thing right here is to reward this uh, web page that you have uh, when you've uploaded all of the files. This is the hosted version of the web app. And here I'm going to pass in my email, for example, something, something simple like the mail at yahoo.com. And then I'm going to click the get notified button. You will see that you're getting this thank you page. And if you go to the slash admin page, you see that the email has actually been collected right here. So the very simple SAS landing page appears to be working. So we have a very simple SAS landing page generated by AI. We've used the AutoGen library in order to generate a simple Flask app along with the templates for it. And we were able to host the finished product on Python anywhere. So it is available online. Thank you for watching, guys. Please like, share and subscribe. Also, if you have any other ideas about Autogen real world use cases, I'm going to try my best to create videos for those. Also, if you want to follow the text tutorial that will be available for MM Expert Pro subscribers, check down into the comments and the description. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. Also, join the Discord channel that I'm going to link down into the description. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye.